Can you 3D print a skatable skateboarding shoe? I don't know, let's find out. In fact, why don't we print one out and have actual professional skateboarders test it? But hold up, that's easier said than done. In order to actually 3D print a skatable skateboarding shoe, I have to design it first, and I don't know the first thing about designing a skateboarding shoe, because I don't know what skateboarders want from their shoes. So to find out, I hit up sponsored skateboarder from the Bay Area, Aaron Cairo. What do you look for from a skateboarding shoe? The main thing is that this area right here, because this is where it wears. Your ollies wear really heavily right there, and then the kickflip motion wears pretty heavily right there. The, the rubber on the bottom also has to have the right traction, yeah, grip. Sense. You basically have these like wear points, and right. as long as you can put enough stuff on those wear points, then you're pretty good. Okay, so the most important things are durability in high wear areas, traction, and to make things a bit more complicated, a soft insole for cushioning impacts. And the entire shoe and all its parts must be 3D printed. Plus, the entire process from design to finished skatable print has to be done in just under two weeks. So I got to work sketching some concepts. Now, one thing I feel like I should address is that while 3D printing shoelaces is possible, a laceless slip-on shoe would be a much simpler and much more durable design for a 3D printed skate shoe. So I took inspiration from one-piece shoes like the easy foam runner. Okay, so we've got a wearable design. Now, it's not perfect, but I did design it to be specifically durable in the areas that are necessary for kick flips and ollies. It also has a herringbone traction pattern, which is great for grip. I've watched a lot of sneaker reviews over the last six to eight years, and herringbone traction pretty consistently seems to be one of the best tractions that you can find. And also, to make things way more difficult than they needed to be, I decided to make this a two-piece construction. So you've got the main exterior of the shoe, and then you've also got a drop-in insole, which is made of a much softer material, which essentially will act as the insole or the cushion. And I also added this little cutaway on the side of the midsole of the shoe so you can see through to the insole. And if we print it in two different colors, it's gonna look really sick. While the shoe design is not perfect, I'm pretty happy with it for like a, what? An hour to two hours worth of shoe designing, which is not a lot, but we really don't have a lot of time for this project, so let's send it. Also, I do wanna show you guys the material that we're using to print this shoe. It's called Flex TPU, and it's essentially a very soft sort of rubbery plastic. By varying the infill, which is the interior structure of whatever 3D item we end up printing, you can actually change the feel of the item itself. So for the exterior of the shoe, we're gonna have a higher infill percentage, which means it's gonna be a little bit stiffer. And for the insole of the shoe, which is gonna be printed in the same material, we're gonna lower the infill percentage, so it'll be a lot softer underneath the your foot because most of the inside of the 3D model will be air. Let's slow down for a second. I can 3D model, I've done it a bunch of times before, I've even done it professionally, but I can only do it in SolidWorks, which is a terrible program for organic shapes like sneakers. So instead, I'm gonna try an experiment. I'm gonna pay two different 3D modelers on Fiverr, essentially a gig website, to create two different models from the same sketch. And not only do these models have to look like the sketch, they also have to be wearable and 3D printable. But to make things a little bit more interesting, I decided to hire one very cheap 3D modeler and one very expensive expensive 3D modeler. And I ended up finding two different guys. One person I paid $20 and the other person I paid $350. And honestly, I have no idea who's gonna do a better job. Four to six days later. All right, so about four days after I sent the sketches out to these fiber designers, I got two models back, and I decided to 3D print both of them to find out which one is better in 3D space. And I bet you guys can't guess which one was designed by which designer. I mean, overall, they do look pretty similar. The one on the right's a little bit more angular, and the one on the left is a little bit more fluid. I'm assuming the one on the left was done in a program like ZBrush, which essentially is a sculpting program, and the one on the right was done in a different program that I might not be familiar with. But overall, both models look pretty good. And of course, I made sure to include the drop-in midsole on both models. Now personally, wearability-wise, I feel like the one on the left might be a little bit better just because the toe box is a little bit wider and the ankle opening is a little bit wider, but the one on the right just looks so much better. It's so much closer to the original sketch. Like, nothing against the one on the left, but even looking at the back of the two shoes, you can tell that this one just isn't totally finished. But yeah, I think I made my decision, and I think the winner is, as you guys could probably guess, the right shoe. This shoe just looks incredible, and I'm actually gonna print this out in its natural size because obviously this is a smaller size, and we'll find out whether the shoe can actually be worn when printed out in a flexible material. But here's the question. Which shoe was designed by the $20 designer and which shoe was designed by the $350 designer? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below and I'll let you guys know a little bit later on in the video. Okay, so here it is, the first print, full-size print of the Braille shoe. I have no idea if this is gonna fit. Hopefully it comes off the build plate. Easy enough, great. 
That's awesome. Now it does have a herringbone traction pattern, which I'm gonna have to dig out or get the support material off of, which is not gonna be easy. But uh, overall, I'm stoked and it looks about the right size. Okay, so here is the very first wearable prototype of the Braille shoe. Now, as you guys can see, I didn't pull off the support material on the bottom of the shoe yet because that's gonna take a while. I'm a little concerned that it might pull off the herringbone traction pattern, so that might be a kind of loss there, <laughs> but we'll have to wait and see. But I think the main point of this test is to find out whether this shape is actually a shape that can be worn. I'm a size nine and this is for Aaron Cairo, who's a size 10. And and honestly, if it doesn't fit me, we're gonna have a problem because his foot's a lot bigger than my foot. So, moment of truth. Okay, we definitely have to widen the ankle area. Actually, it's not too bad. All right, it fits. Now, again, I am gonna add a softer drop-in midsole in there. So that might actually make the shoe a little bit less wearable because it will kind of take up some of the space inside the shoe. I mean, it's genuinely not bad. Now, there is some, a little bit of, um, I guess, chafing around the ankle area. I might reach out to the fiber designer and see if that's something that he can adjust. Short term, what I might do is reprint this a little bit bigger. I feel like it's a good first step. Now, we only have like 10 days left, so I really gotta <laughs> step this up into high gear and make this work. For the first print, for the first wearable print, I'm really happy with it. It was a $20 guy, can you believe that? It's amazing, he knocked it out of the park. He's since raised his prices, which is unfortunate, but for 20 bucks, man, this is incredible. It does kind of bum me out that I spent $350 on a model that I'm never gonna use, but all in the name of science, I guess. But hey, if you were planning to do something similar, I just saved you a couple hundred bucks. And why don't you drop some of those hundies on my soft friend Apothecary? That was the worst transition ever. But for real though, at Apothecary, we pride ourselves in making the best socks ever. Socks that not only look great with all the sneakers in your collection, but also feel great on foot. And honestly, these socks might actually make wearing these 3D printed shoes bearable. Because these shoes, while they look exciting and interesting, are not that comfortable. But seriously, I know it's my own brand, but these socks are awesome. And you guys can check them out for yourself by clicking the link in the top of the description below. But now that we've got our first full-size test print out of the way, let's scale the shoe up because after trying the shoe on, there's no way the shoe is going to fit a size 10-footed person. I'm a size 9 and this didn't even fit me. So let's scale the shoe up and print two of these guys because we have like four days left, which is just about enough time to print out these shoes. Here in my garage. Okay, so we've got all of the first round of 3D prints done. These shoes should be wearable, which I'm really excited about. Obviously, we had done some test prints that uh, didn't fit me, so I scaled the shoes up, and I think they should actually fit the Braille guys, which is good. That's pretty important. Also, you guys get to see my full setup, the full finished 3D printer setup. I still have to get an enclosure for this printer, and I'm waiting for 3D upfitters to create an enclosure for this printer. But huge thank you to Creality for sending out some extra printers. It was necessary, and while I'm not using them right now, I have been using them uh, over the last couple of days to test some other prints that I'm working on for other videos. But I think, because there's like three days left before I actually fly out to San Francisco, I do want to um, actually get these guys printing another part of the project, which I haven't told you guys about yet, that I'm very excited about I'm gonna surprise Braille with. Huge thank you to Creality for sending out these extra printers. If you guys wanna check out Creality, there will be a link in the description below. Great printers, great prints. But like I said, the two shoes are done, the left foot and the right foot. And then obviously we've got the insoles as well. So I'm actually gonna pull these all off the uh, the printers and see if they're, uh, if they work. <laughs> This is from the Creality, I believe, Smart Pro is the name of the printer. So obviously I'm not going to be able to pull off all the support material for you guys on camera, but here it is. The hopefully size 10, or close to size 10, um, skateboarding shoe. I mean, size-wise, it is bigger than the original file by a pretty large amount, but I think that's good because this shoe already fit kind of small, and uh, I think this newer version will fit. And then we've obviously got the insole, which you will be able to see through this little hole right there, so I think that's going to look sick. That looks about right. I made it a little bit smaller, so it should fit inside the shoe better. We also have this other insole, which just finished printing yesterday as well, and it's really difficult to get off the build plate, as you guys can see. So uh, I'm a little afraid to damage this insole. The right shoe is down here on the older Creality, the one that I bought a couple months ago, and it finished up last night. Ah, there we go. Obviously, the print quality is better on the, the Smart Pro. I haven't totally optimized the older printer's print quality, so I mean, there is some differences there, but the Smart Pro, impressively, after like two prints, is already printing like super high quality stuff. This guy I'm still working to, to fix. So if you're grabbing one of these printers, I recommend the Smart Pro or the Ender um, S1, which is another printer that Creality sent out. Here we go, the two skateboarding shoes. I'm super excited about this. I can't wait for the guys to try these on. I am actually going to um, try these out really quickly before we go out to San Francisco, just to make sure that they can actually be skateboarded in. But I guess at this point, I should get the other print set up and uh, hopefully everything works out because we've got like two days left so if it doesn't we're screwed. So we finished the prints both the exterior of the shoe and the drop in insole or midsole I guess in this case. I'm actually going to throw these in the shoe and then try them on see if they fit and also if they're comfortable. Now again I'm a size 9 not a size 10. These shoes are technically supposed to fit a size 10 so I scaled them up by about 10% to make them a little bit larger and hopefully they should fit a size 10. I've never actually put the insoles in yet so I'm excited to see how it looks because obviously one of the design details of the shoe was to be able to see the insole through there and that's why I wanted to print it in like a bright color. <laughs> 
Look at that, that's sick. I really, really dig that. Shout out to Creality for sending over those printers too. If it wasn't for them, this project would not have happened in the time frame that it needed to happen in. So shout out to Creality. Oh, they fit. They fit good too. I wonder if it's, I hope this is big enough for a size 10. I'm gonna be honest, this might be a tight squeeze for a size 10. It looks like there's enough space, but oof, I'm getting a little nervous. Ooh, they feel nice on foot. I will say that there is definitely some, some digging into my foot right there. Unfortunately, it's now a little bit too late, so I can't really adjust the 3D because like I'm leaving in, in a day, essentially. I mean, they do fit, and I feel like if they are a size 10, I mean, it should be able to fit. Worst case scenario, we pull out the insole. Not bad, really not bad. You know what, honestly, I feel like at this point, we should skate them. <sighs> Moment of truth, uh, I'm not great at skateboarding. In fact, I suck at skateboarding. And I, I made a shoe that may not work for skateboarding. So I'm very nervous right now. We're not gonna do any tricks. We're just gonna jump on the skateboard and skate around a little bit. I'm gonna be really embarrassed if I fall, but I'm not gonna cut anything out. So if I fall, you're seeing it. That was embarrassing because I wasn't even doing anything. I was just riding it. I told you I wasn't gonna cut anything out. The good news is, that these shoes are definitely too big. Like way too big. So um, if they're too big for me, they should be the right size for Aaron and everyone at Braille. So that's good news. The bad news is that I, I fell doing nothing, so. I'm here in San Francisco because I'm finally meeting up with Braille to try the 3D printed shoe. A shoe which actually only took about two weeks from start to finish, which is actually a very short amount of time when it comes to producing a shoe that you're supposed to be able to wear and skate in. So I'm a little nervous. I'm a little concerned that it might not be as good as I think it might be. Um, but hey, we're about to find out. Not only that, I also have a surprise for Braille. I actually grabbed one of their skateboarding shoes and I've been wearing it around the last couple days. It's awesome. I love it. Definitely recommend it. But I had my 3D modeler. 3D model the shoe and I 3D printed it. Now, I thought this shoe would be big enough to actually wear. Unfortunately, um, because, because the laces are attached to the shoe itself, they're not actually separate laces, you can't open the shoe. So I don't think you can get your foot into it. And uh, I really only have one of these. Actually, I have two. But the second one failed and has a big hole in the bottom and I can't get the support material out of it. I brought it to San Francisco thinking maybe I could like heat gun it or something and I bought a heat gun and I bought tools and it just didn't work out. Unfortunately, this shoe is a bust. But we do have one shoe that can't be worn, but it looks good. So, not a great surprise, actually. What are your first impressions? How do you feel? Yeah, How they're feel? awesome. Oh, good. My left foot feels very comfortable, and my right foot hurts like hell. <laughs> but my right foot is swollen. So, you know, what can I say? You're going here. I really want to kickflip, but I know it's going to hurt so bad. <laughs> Do it. First try. Do it. Just give it all I can. Do it. Oh! Oh! That was flipping a, flipping a quarter. How are the insoles? They're pretty cushy, to be honest. What the heck? Dude, they are so much more comfy than I thought. Dude, seriously, those are crazy. Oh, okay. All right, yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's a very quick blister on the back if I don't get them off quick. <sighs> okay. Oh. How they feel? Oh. They would feel really good if I wore the right shoe <laughs> size. <laughs> Woo! Oh! That was sick. <laughs> Man, that was the cleanest aerial flip I've ever done in my life. Honestly. Oh. And it matches my pants. It matches your whole my face. Oh, it's only right I get in them. What size are these? Whatever size you want, baby. <laughs> I was like, whoa, where's your homework? And he was like, I didn't print it out. It's whoa. not a drip. Well, I don't know why. You like it? Dripped em? out. It looks like he's going to the club with the famous pajamas. Oh. Yeah. One dollar heel, first try, over the A-frame, <laughs> and I'll buy your next ticket to the club. Oh, the color is clean. I felt like if I was to go to Oakland and kick it out there, they'd be like, bro, what are those? <laughs> the wear test. Oh. He's trying to slide him out. Oh. <laughs> I know why he chose color red for the insult. <laughs> because it's fire. No, so you wouldn't be able to see the blood. <laughs> you know what would be great? It's how many kickflips to put a hole in these. Uh, mm. You know, I gotta I got take the day off. I see nothing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Maybe like a little scuff right there. I think we got some actual like real stuntmen out here. Who wants to try 3D printed shoes? I think Jason Jason I, would love to try them. I actually would love to try them. I'm stretching out because my body feels like a dead animal, but yeah, let's try these. What's the material? 
TPU. Like it's a rubbery plastic. Oh, that's cool. And everything, plastic. and everything in it is made of the same thing? Yeah. Oh, that's, oh, they feel weird. <laughs> Whoa, it feels like a transformer too. That's crazy. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Ow, it kind of hurts. <laughs> oh no, it definitely does hurt. Okay. Is it like towards the front of your foot? Like right? Like right there? No, no, I kind of feel it on the sides of the soles. Oh, okay. Like I can have big, wide ogre feet. Oh. Oh, They're very similar both ways. You didn't label the right or left? You know what? That, that was a good thought, honestly, but I completely forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Guess how long these took to print, Mowgli. 20 days. Ooh. That's close, yes, actually. Five days. Five days, five days per shoe for the black part and then two days for the red part. So actually, I mean, if, if I did it with one printer, then like 14 days, two weeks. Yeah, that was like a really close, yeah. really close guess. I would have said like uh, two hours. <gasps> Extra sweaty. How they feel? They kind of feel good. Is the insole 3D printed? Yeah, everything. <gasps> I feel like I want to print the wheel or something. I don't know why I'm not pushing. For some reason, when they're on my feet, I feel like I can't push, but I guess I can. Game show. So what'd you think overall? They skated exponentially better than I thought. I thoroughly enjoyed them. So if you could buy 3D printed shoes, you would. <laughs> yes. Wow, they're like not that scuffed. I'm actually really surprised. Yeah, check it out. I mean, a lot of tricks went down on that. Looking pretty good. That's wild. Oh. What are your takeaways? What are your thoughts? How'd you feel about them? I was shocked because I thought that they were going to be a lot less comfortable I, they were more comfortable than i thought especially the insole i'm kind of interested to see does it pull out it does yeah okay i don't know if it will but you could try Let's i try. put it in so it should let come try. out let me try oh, there we go oh yeah no problem okay so check that out air inside is very cushy it's actually a lot more comfortable than i thought i have that bruise on my foot which is causing some swelling which is causing it to kind of that would do hit it right there and that was killing me but other than that it was pretty good i heard that some of the skaters are having issues with the edges here too yeah so fascinating though i love to see like technologies develop like this we've That's gotten awesome. lots of 3d printed wheels 3d printed board this is our first ever pair of 3d printed shoes that's awesome but i feel like it's just advancing pretty fast i did this at home they're they're crazy like hundred thousand dollar 3d printed that can print stuff that feels like rubber, essentially. Right. But I mean, I don't have that kind of budget, but for, you know, a couple thousand dollars, you can have like five or six printers just printing shoes all day if you want. Right. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, it's super fascinating. So I think the style of these is really sick. I actually think they look really cool. They actually skated really well. That's awesome. I mean, trail flip down the five, crook, back to the handrail. Lots of flat ground tricks. That was crazy. If I had to rate these, it's, you can't really compare them to just a shoe though. Yeah, They're true. just so different. If I had to rate these with the other 3D objects that I've done, I would say I'd give it a nine out of 10. Nice. They did not break. It's kind of the main thing. Like we have done lots of 3D printed wheels. I think all of them broke. The really? The 3D printed trucks broke. Wow. The skateboard broke. It's kind of what we do is break things, but <laughs> these didn't break. I'm surprised. How did they not break? I have no idea. Honestly, like the fact that it's just some scuffing after seeing what you guys did and I'm blown away like that's crazy and that yeah. one's not even the worst one like this one's this one's not even that bad either in fact it just smoothed it out a little bit that's wild it's crazy how much the shoe you guys use to actually skate into like the scuffing goes all the way back there yeah the different tricks they really put it to put it to test crazy well thank you so much for having me i yeah, appreciate thank it you. definitely but that's it let me know what shoe you guys would like me to design next and i'll see you all in the next one